Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as our previous speaker already discussed a lot about the transformer architecture, chart GPT, and other things, uh, I'm having a little bit assumption that all the participants here is having some kind of uh, basic ideas about various kind of uh, evolution happened in the, the world of AI. So right now, we stand at a fascinating crossroad of in the technology area where our, where our advancement uh, has, uh, has an impact on both as an impressive advancement as well as a daunting advancement. Both sides is there in the field of AI. Uh, basically, basically uh, this journey started few years before, few, many years before, from the bio-inspired computing, from ant colony optimization, genetic algorithm, genetic programming uh, type of things. From uh, that area to it came to the single layer perceptron to multi layer perceptron, then uh, then then it became to uh, artificial neural network. Then the deep learn uh, deep uh, neural network came when the learning came into market. Then DNN came from DNN to CNN, CNN to RNN uh, because uh, all these things you can understand from the artificial neural network is nothing but just the wrapper or the advancement of the earlier technology single layer perceptron or multi layer perceptron technologies so rnn on top of the recurrent neural network lstm came so lstm you can see is uh, more and less the advancement technological advancement much more optimizations happen on top of the rnn and some some kind of core framework being the constant some kind of uh, auxiliary things added and uh, some uh, memory uh, cells added and this uh, new concept come as the LSTM. Then after LSTM, then GRU came. Till this journey of the evolution of the AI, it was looking like a very, you know, that linear advancement in the already existing technology, very linear advancement. But for example, we are having, uh, my entire talk will be a little bit philosophical angle, uh, policy making angle. You see, uh, we are having a car, the car, uh, for example, we are having a Swift, then Swift Desire, then some different model, different advancement, different accessories. So ultimately, it is a car. So the approach to reach out the solution related to AI, the approach is more and less same. Uh, there is some advancement in the mathematics, but more and less the approach, went to, approach was very, 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 very similar. Uh, but when the encoder decoder came, the transformer came, the large language model, the chart GPT kind of tools came in the market. And the research area that uh, everything you need uh, is the attention that paper got released. Uh, so there we realized that the approach is getting departed from in the conventional path to a new path. Uh, the new, relatively new path, not completely new, but relatively new. Why the transformer is based on encoder, decoder is based on LSTM, somehow connected to LSTM, somehow connected to GRE, somehow connected uh, to neural network again. So somehow it is connected, but Still, it is a relatively new approach. It, despite of all this advancement in the current scenario, all this advancement of the transformer arch architecture, chart GPT like tools, with all with all our excitements, we are still firmly in the realm of narrow AI. This is the task-specific AI. Whatever we are trying to develop, that is very task-specific. So the future is after the Gen AI. Uh, if I can consider the Jane AI as a GAI, then the future is going to be the AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. You know that uh, uh, Open uh, Open AI company of Elon Musk, they have they are also working on the product development for the AGI. What is the AGI? AGI is nothing but that you will develop this artificial intelligence model and tool that will not do any specific task and that will be not trained for a specific task in in in, in specific. But in generic, it can do multiple different types of tasks, uh, just like any human being. We can read uh, documents, we can understand, we can uh, detect the object inside the image, uh, we can speak and we can listen all at a at time. So different types of activity can be done by a single model. So that will be only considered as called AGI. Right now, we are, after the invent of JNAI and different uh, advancement of the JNAI, uh, we are still remained uh, from a distant uh, from the AGI achievement. Till now, we are not in the uh, we are not nearby to the AGI as well. So while narrow AI is achieve, achieving a remarkable success, it is still far from the concept of generalized intelligence. 
we are very very far from that area right now so the journey towards the agi may be very fast forward with the help of the gen ai but uh, i visualize that the like uh, like ann2 uh, dnn2 cnn2 rnn lstn gru this linear journey it is not uh, gen ai is not a direct tangent uh, towards the artificial general intelligence so to achieve the agi the industries are working on a completely new approach and in that approach the generative ai algorithms may have a role by assisting or augmenting the power of the developers of the ai tools like gen ai can develop a lot of realistic synthetic data create models out of the fly on the fly multiplying the power of the ai developer by assisting them in writing codes and optimizing their algo in this process they can the ai the gen ai can make it the fast forward to reach at the uh, artificial general intelligence this is one part second part is that what is coming next my topic was that after the gen ai what next what do you need to think about the next part is that you think uh, right now we are talking a lot of uh, points about uh, data security information security so we are concerned about data security information security government of india government of state government various countries across the world they make data security policies they make act and law that protect the individual of the citizen of that country from data theft and data misuse right now we need to also think about intelligent security because you understand tons of tons of data the hacker is not interested in that data the hacker is interested a ai model which executed its program executed itself on the tons of tons of data and the crispy output of that tons and tons of data is represented or manifested it into a mathematical equation and if somebody will steal that mathematical equation he don't need the tons of tons of data so the government need to uh, is, is in a process to create policies and uh, act and uh, legal framework to protect the model or the protect the intelligence of uh, a digital intelligence in addition to the data and information right so this is one aspect that we also need to think about how to protect the intelligence of the ai models uh, in our future uh, and near this is one aspect uh, now another aspect is that uh ai or uh, you know generative uh, sorry general intelligence artificial general intelligence these things are going to come up in near future it is not much uh, ahead of uh, time but it is at least will take some years so when we are thinking about the future uh, we should not uh, consider or visual visualize our future of the ai in isolation there are various kind of different technological landscapes they are also developing they are also evolving very rapidly in the same pace as the ai but uh, uh, not visible to the other regular public just like for the example quantum computing uh, we if you are considering the future of ai well, how it will be then high performance computing the super computer the power computation is very very important because if there is no tpu tera processing uh, you know, tpus of uh, uh, the google if there is no concept of gpu Uh, that possibly there was no deep learning came came to the market could could have been possible deep learning could have not could have not been possible for the gpu because you need a lot of computing power so when you talking about high performance computing is very very important for us then how can you ignore the landscape of development uh, happening in the quantum computing area you can imagine few years before we are discussing and arguing that uh, google is claiming that he is having a quantum computer ibm is claiming that they are having a quantum computer there is true or wrong true or false it is a fake news or correct news but what happens after few years uh, after in 2024 right now google ibm in fact india and tata institute of fundamental research they are having the real quantum computer in their premise and after that we were got convinced that the hardware of the quantum computer is not accessible to normal public so being a researcher we may not have the access to the hardware the the quantum computer so our research is very limited so we never focused on that area within few years what happened companies like google uh, uh, released a product like siric and ibm produce uh, pro released like uh, kiskit in the siric and kiskit you can write a code software 
you can code program which can be executed in a quantum computer. And if you want to execute in a quantum computer, what you need to do is that you simply push the program into the Google, uh, Google Cloud or the IBM Cloud. Uh, the IBM will take the program and execute in a real quantum computer and get the output back to you using the cloud computer. Basically, quantum computer as a service. You can use it. You can go to the Google and search IBM quantum computing platform. They can give you a free of cost. You can write a program and execute in a real quantum computer, get the result back. So this advancement is happening in the different part, different landscape of the quantum computer. One time will come when we will think that uh, this uh, quantum neural network concepts, the quantum neural network concepts can be uh, can be uh, very possible. When it will be very possible, it just as in that you can run a AI model, a neural network based model, or any Gen AI type of thing, uh, thing model. On some systems, they are hundred times faster than what we currently, uh, what what capacity currently we are having. So quantum neural network will be remain. Uh, right now, it is uh, it is remain largely uncharted. But this intersection of the quantum computing world and the AI can definitely become a uh, you, you know become a uh, catalyst towards getting towards reaching to the AGI as early as possible. Perhaps within two years or three years. OpenAI is claiming that is they can reach, reach to the AGI uh, based product within uh, two, three years. Now, when we have the Gen AI, when we have the AGI, you think about a concept called technological singularity. What is this concept, the technological singularity? The singularity is a physics uh, point, and technological singularity is a point uh, at which the technological growth becomes so uncontrollable and irreversible that anybody cannot predict what is going to happen. For example, you have developed a tool that can create another tool which is much more intelligent than itself, the original parent. Then the second tool can create another tool or another product which is much more intelligent than the second one. And it will create a cascading effect and the output and the result that is not predictable to our human being. So that is called technological singularity. This technological singularity may be go towards a positive direction, may go towards a negative direction as a result of which the most uh, uh, the top technocrats in the entire world, they sit together, they are doing analysis, and accordingly they're taking very, uh, very cautious steps towards the AGI development and after Gen AI, where it will go, where it will move, they are taking very, 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 very cautious decisions and steps. And the research are very targeted. Uh, they have to go through the stringent ethical uh, uh, committees, rules, and regulations to go uh, in that uh, part. Uh, not going further into the tech parts, uh, what I like to say that how this Gen AI or AGI in future, if it is coming in the futuristic uh, AGI is going to help the humankind, the government, the policymakers, uh, in, in which manner. You see, uh, we have the, some, some examples we are having. You see, uh, there are uh, subsidiary intelligence bureau in a country. Uh, there are military intelligence in our country. There, uh, there are you know raw uh, research and analysis wing in our country. So every intelligence unit, they used to give their intelligence to the government and their intelligence with each other. To military, to police department, police department, to military, they used to share everything. Uh, 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 the uh, the, uh, the 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 intelligence need to be integrated, and the intelligence need to be you know that uh, uh, a fruitful a fruitful intelligence conversion from information to the intelligence is a tough job. As a result of which, a multi agency center established in our country. So that everybody can be coordinated in a proper manner. Imagine an AI system which takes the intelligence from different intelligence agencies and understand, analyze all those intelligence together and create a thread, uh, just predict a thread vector that that could be a possible impact because all this information together is leading towards one attack on that area. So the intelligence can also be automated and the prediction can also be automated. Uh, second uh, use cases, what I can understand that. You know, United Nations has defined that 17 SDG goal, sustainability development goal for each and every country. Uh, most of the goals are very overlapping with each other. For example, if in one of the goal you want to put security, you have to expand the area of the agriculture. In another goal, you have the environmental protections where you have to expand the forest area. 
so they are very counter overlapping to each other if you want to expand this particular vertical and develop the one vertical then another vertical is affected so it is quite impossible that we can be developed in all the 17 verticals eight we are having only possibilities that we can have a well balanced sdg means uh, we are not completely food security eight we are not completely bad environmental uh, parameters so how to reach each verticals in an optimized manner and what is the optimized manner to find out that we are having a lot of it verticals it software ecosystems how these particular software because we can get the telemetry data then the ai can analyze i can suggest that what government government policies uh, can be recommended so that all the 17 development goals can be achieved uh, without affecting each other in a much more best optimized way so that could be one possible and very effective uh, policy making level how the gnai can help the government uh, third thing is that the you know that currently we are having the low uh, 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 success rate in while you are having some court case you are having some problem in the court then in the court itself right now we are using the uh, ai tools to analyze the court case and give uh, suggestions recommendations to the judges uh, to help them in rapid uh, decision making uh, in the future the gnai can also use can be used by the law enforcement agencies by taking the investigation fact reports and doing the investigation connecting the uh, missing dots together and create the theory on which the law enforcement agency can act to resolve any cases very easily also this list are endless when you are having uh, the stool in in our hand the power in your hand this list are endless and there can be n number of uh, use cases but right now instead of focusing on the application how it can be very useful to the society we may need to work on making the technology robust number one safe number two secure number three so uh, uh, as i was told that i have been provided for 10 minutes of time so i just like to conclude here so that other participant can get a fair chance of the, uh, chance of their share uh, so if any uh, any questions or anything will be there so we can, we can have a discussion otherwise we will conclude here thank you Yes, Mr. Ji. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, uh, you have raised hand if you want to ask and discuss anything. Uh, Mr. Nilajri, can you please enlighten us? Like, what do you mean by the synthetic data? Synthetic data. And You're talking about synthetic data, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, basically, whenever we are uh, working on the AI, there are two types of uh, models. One, uh, uh, basically, take some data. Some voices. Manoji, just. Uh, there are two types of things. Is that they takes uh, data for training data set, and we work on the training data set, then generate some kind of um, uh, model. Uh, AI models are of, of course two types, in which uh, there will be one model and that will model free. AI can have. Uh, it can generate a model it may not generate a model still it can be ai so again ai can have two things it may have training data it may not have training data for example though in those cases in to develop any ai model you need some training data and you don't have the data then what happens our researcher goes to the kaggle and uh, download some training data sets of foreign country some 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 data set from us and uh, russia some uh, some data sets which is already augmented or manipulated data sets and uh, those data sets they want to use it in the context of india so due to the lack of data sets and proper data sets our researchers get hampered and whenever in any institution you will go you will find that do you have data to this research once you have the data then there is a lot of hope but without data there is no thing so gni right now is being used to generate synthetic data means dummy data which is a much more realistic in nature they create the pattern using the pattern they create a lot of dummy data and little bit augmentation in the data uh, horizontal skip, uh, skipping uh, skewing of the, uh, the different types of augmentation of the data so that the realistic looking data can be generated and those data can be used for training the ai model where there is no actual data actually present that is why that there is why the gen ai is in use right now uh, but, uh, here how does it differ from because from ages now we have been managing with the simulated data we have been using monte carlo simulation and because the data point generates from the data itself 
right? Suppose you have 100 point of data, I wanted to create a millions data. I can apply any kind of the simulation. I can generate data rather than having dependency on the foreign countries. So how the synthetic data differs from the simulated data? No, no, no. That simulated data uh, that you are generating the simulated data without depending on the foreign country data, you are having some only the one, one lakh data. From one lakh data, you are generating one million data. So that for that generation only, the GNAI is now, uh, now being used to generate the data out of this out of this particular data they can generate data the point is that here you have to say the pattern there they are finding the pattern they are generating the data for you that part that uh, generation of that data is becoming very simple and easier for them right now this is very easier in an easy way you can do that and i would like to add some point because for uh, the data security there is a great advancement has happened now uh, because we all know the MITI is the statutory body for cyber security, right? So it's the government of India statutory body for cyber security. And they make the policy for all across what we consume for the cyber security. Right. So, so now they have been working more towards that extended from the data security to the forensic security. Right. right? And uh, I have this policy documentation with, with me. Anyone would like to have what is the roadmap of METI, the Government of India statutory body, in terms of the application of the generative uh, AI model, right? So I can share with all of you in best interest of our community. So you can have a clear idea about the Government of India direction for in terms of uh, the generative AI. Uh, for the application of the cyber security. And uh, for academic interest, now this forensic security, the forensic science is booming like anything. So for the career aspiration also, right? So the forensic science could be an alternate discipline, even who has an interest in data science. Thank you. Hey, one aspect I just like to add here is that, uh, Government is government of India is having a lot of policy and working on the different policies. Uh, how AI can be utilized in a positive way? Number one, number two, how uh, we should not uh, encourage the use of AI in a negative way. Encouraging in a positive way, discouraging from using being used in a negative way. But right now, uh, running AI model on top of any data, and that AI model generated on top of the data to secure that model. That is a point of concern right now. For example, we are having the data of the RTO. We run, we ran a mod AI model on top of the RTO data. The RTO data is there. The hacker is not interested in the RTO data. The hacker is interested in the model generated from the RTO data. Now, the concern is that what is the authentic what is what is the legal framework that somebody is running the data on uh, running ai model on top of my data i'm working in the bank uh, sorry i'm a consumer in the bank i'm doing a lot of transactions my transactions are uh, private to myself and if these transactions are there in the database of the bank bank is running a ai model on top of my data the data in which i am entangled and after that this particular model is not properly secured by the bank and it has been stolen by the by the hackers and uh, as a result of which uh, in some way i am also getting affected so what will be the policy how it will be handled third party uh, analysis tool is going to happen on my data my footmarks so that is a point of uh, concern right now uh, yes parijav you can ask discuss um, uh, sir just a quick question uh, as you suggested uh, about the utility of uh, synthetic data for training your models, so aren't you concerned about the hallucination of LLMs while utilizing your uh, synthetic data to train those models? Yeah, that is uh, that is a uh, that is an issue. Uh, that uh, we are concerned about that actually. That is true. That's true. Hallucination problems will be uh, there, but. Uh, it is, it is there. There's a concern is there. You are true. You are, you are correct. The problem is here is that 
the tool uh, the 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 model that is used to, to generate the uh, generate the uh, synthetic data and uh, the, if the same model can able to consume the data to enhance itself so anyway so where it will lead what kind of model is going to be trained what kind of program it is going to become so those are the areas actually this is the ethical part of the ai development and you know few uh, few years before after the chat gpt uh, has been released uh, 12 big research firms including the open ai itself uh, they have discussed and they have stopped and paused the research activity for any uh, model which is beyond the capacity of the chat gpt for at least one year so that they can do the proper assessment of the research is going in a positive negative directions so those aspects are there Thank you. Okay, Vishwajit, you want to speak anything? <laughs> 